Welcome to Channel 37. My name is Casper and I'm a scientist. My name is Lily and I'm a classical musician. We've been at home a lot this past lockdown and we've been getting into new hobbies. And one of the hobbies that we've adopted, like some of you out there, is building DIY Eurorack modules. Now we're absolute beginners. We've made a lot of mistakes and along the way we thought it might be fun to document our progress and share it with you hopefully to prevent you from making some of the same mistakes that we've made and to let you vicariously enjoy the pleasure of building these modules. Yeah, share along in this experience with us and uh, watch the trials and tribulations of a classical musician and a scientist trying to enter the synth world. I would like to explain the name of the channel real quick. I saw this interesting article on Vice the other day about Channel 37. It's this narrow band of noise on analog television right between the regular entertainment of channel 36 and channel 38. And this channel 37 is kept clear for scientific research purposes. I thought, what a fitting name. It has analog, it has noise, it has science in there. It kind of matches the vibe of what we want to do with this channel. Mm -hmm. So we kind of want to bring the scientific inside and the musical inside and the analog part. And noise is definitely going to be a big part of it. So yeah, we thought that would be a fitting name for this channel. Yeah, we just want to create a space for exploration of all kinds musically and in the synth world. So for this first video, I thought it would be nice to share some of our goals with you and to show you some of our achievements and some of our major mistakes. So as a rough goal for what we want to do with this channel, um, I got this DIY synth case. Oh, <laughs> it's a heavy beast. It's all made out of wood. Nice sky blue, I guess. Mm -hmm. So how many of these models did we actually build? We built one of we them. Built one. <laughs> we built one of them. Um, this is the classic Penrose quantizer. It's a really nice DIY kit, but I did not build it. I got it to see if a quantizer is right for our rack. And I have another quantizer in mind that would be really fun to build for this channel because uh, you don't see it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it's quite new, so not that many people have it. Mm -hmm. The Plague Bearer, I wanted to get that for a long time. And I was actually planning to convert it to a 4 HP module that's uh, 2 HP skinnier than it is right now. And I might still do that. So right now I have this Plague Bearer, which uh, we built, which I'll share some footage of. And here is another Plague Bearer that is attached to the case. <laughs> this is the first mistake you can learn from. <laughs> it's attached to the case. Um, another Plague Bearer that we did not build, but just because I really like the distortion and the plate bearer. Mm. And it's also useful, I mean, to be able to compare and contrast the, yeah. your own experiments with a more professionally built module. I'll get rid of this. Maybe <laughs> you can point out the module that we built in the big rack. The first uh, homemade addition to our more permanent Euro rack situation is the new tone, which is a really exciting distortion module that we were drawn, drawn to for our first project. We're really into some deep, gritty distortion, and this um, actually was a success on our first try. So it's, it's the perfect thing to start out with. I recommend it highly. Yeah, new tone is built by a Spanish company called Plankton Electronics. It was an exceptionally well-documented kit. Unfortunately, we did not record video of us building it. Kind of the main feature of this module is the new tube, which is uh, designed by Korg. It's kind of a micronized version of a tube valve. So it gives the same kind of warm, fuzzy distortion that you would ex expect from a tube circuit. So it's basically a glorified uh, voltage-controlled amplifier with overdrive and feedback circuitry really dope, really gritty. It goes into some kind of self oscillation where you just hear these like particles rattling along with the fundamental frequency. It's, it's really dope. It's worth a try for a beginner for sure. It was so easy. Yeah, it was really easy. I think we should show people what we use to build it because that yeah. really undermines our credibility as yeah. DIY experts. That's true. Should we show them? Yeah. Okay. okay. Little show and tell time. I'm back. So we built the new tone with this. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, it's the most caveman-like soldering iron you could possibly find. I think this thing was five euros, so it's like seven dollars. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and I had it around because I wanted to melt some ropes. So I didn't even buy it to do soldering. Mm -hmm. And yet it worked just fine for yeah. this uh, project. I I'm... used this roll of solder, Toolcraft brand solder. It's very thick, it's about one millimeter thick. Uh, so not a precise job by any stretch. Yeah, definitely would not recommend the soldering iron for more precise projects, but we it just got us by on this on this first project. I kind of liked it. Yeah. I think you could You're do loyal worse. To it. It you could the, do worse than one. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think mm -hmm. what we found is that the biggest difference has been in the quality of um, the soldering wire. Mm -hmm. This iron actually did a pretty good job, but it's not precise enough, so I don't trust it not to burn any of the smaller parts. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. And then we got an upgrade. Then we upgraded to this guy, which has all the allure we were looking for. It's got the adjustable heating, adjustable tips, but it was a giant letdown. So beware, looks flashy. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I found it, it did not heat up very evenly. Uh, maybe I'm not using it right. I know that uh, Molten Music Modular is using something very similar, even without the temperature dial, but it hasn't done me any favors. Uh, so then what we got, we got a third option. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Then we got this guy, the KSE... Yeah. That's right, that's exactly right. The KSGER T12 soldering station. And T12 are these cool tips. Um, they've got two points of contact here through which power is fed and then the heating element is in the tip so it heats up within seconds. There's also um, like a heat sensor in the tip so it knows how hot it is. It allows uh, which... for extreme precision. Yeah, and this is just a delight to work with. It heats up in seconds. Um, Temperature is super controlled, so I love this. And it was not that much more expensive than, where's the terrible one? Than this guy. <laughs> it was a more, much more expensive than that one, like maybe one and a half times or double, yeah. but I would just go for one of these straight away. It saves you a lot of frustration and potentially broken projects. So. Agreed. Cool stuff. We're gonna use that for our ne next project. Mm -hmm. Which hopefully we'll document for you and you can um, judge us from afar. So for our next project, we're gonna focus on one of our short to middle term goals, which is to build a modular drum kit. Uh, I've committed to this by selling my Roland TR8, and we're gonna replace it with some proc drums, which we ordered from Thonk. Uh, these drums are really cool because you can kind of morph between different patches, so it's gonna be really fun. Mm -hmm. But we need a utility device in order to be able to combine the sounds from these different drums, which is where our first project comes in. Yeah, this is the Six Mix. It's a skinny utility mixer. And what's excellent about it is it uses mostly surface mount um, parts. So it's a great chance to hone in your surface mount soldering skills. So we're really excited to start with this. This is designed by a Hungarian uh, modular builder who goes by the name of Antumbra. And I ordered it from Pusherman in the UK. A uh, pretty cool trick, uh, since the UK is no longer part of Europe, we have to pay import duties, but the PCB and front panel come in just below the threshold. And then I ordered all of the parts myself. So this is not a kit, this is a bundle of different parts that I ordered from Mauser. And what I did is I labeled each of the parts uh, with a number that corresponds to the steps in the build guide. So for example, the first step in the build guide is to attach uh, the three op amps, the amplifiers that this device needs. So I just labeled the op amps with a number one and I did that for all of the steps in the build guide. So this is our first self-compiled kit. Yep. It really wasn't that much work to put this together um, and it's a lot cheaper. So I paid about 22 bucks for the panel and the PCB and I paid maybe another 20 bucks for the parts. So that's a really cheap mixer at around 40 euros. Uh, you do have to be really careful when you place the order for the parts. My synth friend Xander likes to say, you always order the wrong thing. That's how you end up with this. Yeah, we did fall prey to it with these giant fat ass resistors. Yeah. Uh, no, maybe we can hang on to them and use them one day. 
I think they will make a nice piece of jewelry, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. Maybe we'll uh, have that be part of our merch. Let me know if you are interested in some resistor earrings of something of a like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they made them uh, this big, but they definitely won't fit on our surface mount project. But anyway, we're going to get started on this one um, and we'll show you our progress. And then the next thing probably is going to be the proc drums. Yeah. So, what is our ultimate goal? For our long term goal, we're going to be working on the MS22 filter by Freetom. This is going to be a huge challenge for us because it's four PCBs stacked on top of each other and tiny, tiny 0603 uh, service mount parts. We are really drawn to this though, despite the challenge, because it has this like really sick, intense distortion. Um, and we both gravitate towards that kind of sound. So we got our practice cut out for us. We need to, to work on SMD soldering skills. And this Antumbra 6 mix is going to be a good first try at that. And we'll see what else comes up. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll hope you'll have a lot of fun along this journey with us and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.